what's up what's up what's up um i know that this video is coming late um in comparison to other months but there's been a lot of stuff going on and so it's better late than never today we're gonna do the september reading wrap-up which is kind of short so i'm gonna throw in some show and possibly movie reviews for y'all um in here from september and even from this month because it is going to be really short because i only read two books in the month of september um i want to start off this so i don't forget with um how far along I'm into my reading challenge for the year. Now, I've officially passed 35 books. Um, I'm at 36 out of 40 right now, which is more than my goal was for every other year, as well as um, more books that I've read than any other year. According to Goodreads, I'm five books ahead of schedule, and I'm... 90% complete with the challenge. I believe that before this month is up, I could possibly finish this. I also think it's a guarantee that I'll be done with this challenge probably by Thanksgiving. So that's cool. Um, which I have never done this before, so I'm very proud of myself, um, and it's fun. I love the reading challenges, um, because it does that, it, it does just that. It challenges me to read more, um, think more, and just, um, enjoy it, um, more so, because it's like a challenge, you know? So anyway... Let's start off with the first book I am read in the month of September. Um, in the month of September, um, I told y'all the last wrap-up that I was reading Someone's Listening by Serafina Nova Glass. Now, this book, I will say, was probably my least favorite out of all the ones I read from her. Um... But it did remind me of that movie. That movie I watched um, with Sam Claflin. Um, the movie about the psychiatrist and something goes terribly wrong. And basically, they have to figure out um, what's going on and they have to save themselves. Um, but that's what this book was like. Um, it was about a psychologist and basically, um, female psychologist and basically something goes terribly wrong. Um, she's married to a food critic, but basically, um, something goes terribly wrong, um, with her basically book launch party and something goes south and basically she has to figure out what occurred um i will say this book was all right it wasn't great and honestly um a lot of these whodunits is really easy for me to figure out um there's a lot of clues um you know, it's not like, um, an Agatha Christie, really, a lot of these new whodunits, it's not really like Agatha Christie, where, like, you really have to put a lot of thought into who did it, um, I would say if you pay attention, you'll probably figure this out, but it wasn't bad, it's just, it wasn't great, so, yeah, um, Personally, I thought it was alright. It was an alright read. It's just not my favorite. Um, I actually rated it a three star. And the reason why is because I was kind of in a slump with this book. I'm not going to lie. Like, it took me a while 
to finish this one like a while so yeah the next book i cannot say the same about um the next book which is the last book i read in september was called gone for good by joanna schaffhausen i think i had read this one because it was an extra borrow for the month of september not that i really needed the extra borrows considering that um i only read one with a regular ball but i'm glad i did because um let me tell you guys something this series that she's done is actually amazing like is actually amazing and i'm just like absolutely drawn into this um world and usually i don't like um detective type um or cop and fbi type fiction series i hate them usually but I was pleasantly surprised. Um, this is the first book of the Detective Annalisa Vega um, story. And honestly, um, this author, I believe, has recently started this series. So it's kind of like brand new, really. Um, I'm actually in love with these books, guys. I love the character, the main characters. I love the... Um, the family dynamics here I love everything about this series so far and I can say that because I have read the second book but I did not read it in the month of September I am totally absolutely in love with this book series um I really did not expect to be when I found out it was a series about like a detective um, I am just like, I, I don't know, there's something about this story and the way it's written, it's more about the way it's written, guys, it's so smooth, it's like watching a show, it's not like, um, a real rough read, you can picture everything, you can, um, it's, it's one of those reads where it, like, keeps you going because you want to figure out who done it, and the drama, um, the absolute drama of it all. Um, this first book, basically, um, it's about the, um, fictional lovelorn killer. It's basically like a serial killer in a, in a book. And basically, um, they all thought he was gone, and then something happens in the neighborhood, another murder... And they all are basically back on the edge of their seats again because it's a similar pattern. It's a similar pattern. And um, they all believe that he's back. And basically, in, uh, Detective Annalisa Vega has to go on this goose, um, uh, wild goose chase or hunt, uh, whatever you want to say, um, for the killer. And along the way, she comes across different discrepancies in the stories. And she's led basically a million different directions, but it all comes back together at the end. And that's what I love about her stories, um, Joanna Schaffhausen. Um, her stories can go a million different places because that's what a detective has to do. They have to look out and seek out all of their different um, leads. But what I love about her writing is that somehow, some way, she just pulls it all back together um, and puts a little nice red bow on the top of it, on the top of the story when she's finished. And I'm telling you, her writing style is so clean. Um, I'm just in love with her story. Um, uh, her, her writing, her ability to go a million different ways with the story and then pull it all back together and and the plot twist that we get at the end of every book it's just like so good i've never read um books where i'm guaranteed to have a plot twist and guaranteed to basically be surprised at the end really and she just has a way of absolutely wooing me with the um endings it's something that not a lot of authors know how to do, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm totally, um, totally, totally in love with her writing style. So, 
it's just amazing. It's just amazing. And her um, Goodreads reviews reflect that because she's absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, yeah. That's that. Those are the two, only two books I read. Um, let me see something. The only two books I read in the month of September... So now I'm going to get into the, um, the shows that I've been watching and maybe a movie that I watched, um, in the month of, um, September. Here's one thing I will say. I for sure watched Cobra Kai in the month of, um, September, which I have to say... Um, guys, <laughs> the, how should I say this, with Cobra Kai, it's honestly, it, it just gets better every season, I don't know how, um, the nostalgia was there this season, the, um, the comedy was there this season, it's just like such a an amazing show. Um, I'm pretty sure the season I recently watched was season five, which is the latest season. Guys, it was so good. It was so, so, so good. This season was, I thought in the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a slow ass season. And then it progressed and the stakes were raised and the stakes were raised and the stakes were raised. And it's just like, I know, like, a lot of people are probably skeptical about this show and if it lives up to the Karate Kid movies. And it, in my opinion, it just totally elaborates further and um, it just gives such nostalgia and such laughs, like, which is what we all need during this time period. And it's just amazing like this show is one of the only shows that i can say gets better every single season and honestly they could probably go on forever um although i don't think it will but everybody loves this show and you may be like well that's kind of you know off a little bit like we're watching a show about you know teenagers in high school or whatever it's more than that guys like i'm telling you like it's so hilarious it's so amazing um the characters that come back from the original karate kid series it's just like y'all like if you are real if you are a real karate kid fan i'm telling you you're not going to be disappointed with this show um now let me just say one thing okay the season finales with this show and the fight scenes are always like epic like these fight scenes are epic i've never seen um fight scenes consistently done um over and over again and and never these never get old they never get old um the fight scenes the choreography is just amazing um and and i will say with the season finale you may want to check out in the first um, minute, you may also want to check out probably, um, halfway through, but I'm telling you, do not do that. Wait till the very bitter end, and I'm telling you, I am stoked for next season, guys. Like, you have no idea. Like, every single time, I feel, they leave us wanting so much more on every single season, and I, I'm telling you, I haven't watched many shows where this is the case. I've watched shows so many times before where I'm like, okay, y'all just need to cut it out like y'all just need to stop it like because it's not working anymore this season i still i still want to see what's going on next i still want to see what's going on next season i am hooked and now i have to wait a whole nother year for the next season to come out it's just amazing um i will say that i love the flashbacks as well i love the incorporation of the young terry silver and the young um um, crease, they are just so, um, I will say, young crease is absolutely fine, I'm just gonna say that, um, <laughs> I just need to say this, 
but um the show is just like the the and one thing that really surprised me this year was the young Johnny Lawrence CGI yo if you don't realize like they have this crazy technology now to where it looks so real but at the same time you know it's not real cuz it's very it's a eerie looking version of the person that you're talking about but they did such a good job like it was scary how real it looked and how eerie it obviously wasn't that person it was just it it was something else to see on screen for one of the first times i've ever seen that you know um i my favorite characters by far with this show hawk you got to love hawk um, I love, uh, Stingray. Oh my gosh. He's, let me tell you, as an actor, that guy is so underrated. Um, all the shows he's in, he's just amazing. Um, the movies he's been in, he's, he's such a great addition, um, to a, uh, film or show. Great addition. Um, my favorite characters, uh, you gotta love Crease, guys. I mean, you gotta love Crease. You gotta love the... Um, as much as people can't stand him, he's a really good villain, y'all. Like, he plays a really good villain, uh, Silver does. Um, the, oh my goodness. There's just so many things. Um, I will tell you who my least favorite characters are. Um, my least favorite characters are, um, I will say, um, uh, Daniel LaRusso's son, oh my god, y'all, like, he is so annoying, like, somebody, oh my goodness, every single time he comes on screen, like, he just irritates me, um, I don't really like, I don't really like the kid that Robbie mentored, I think he's like, I don't know, there's just something about it, like, his, his, um, his vibe is, like, so, like, he's so small, but he's trying to be tough, and it's, like, really irritating. I can't stand the two of them, guys. The the the, the kid that um Daniel LaRusso's son bullied and Daniel LaRusso's son, they're just, like, so irritating to me. I just wish they would get them off the show immediately. Um, there's just... Oh, my gosh. The show is great, guys. The show is absolutely... Oh, and the other one that annoys me, like, crazy is the... um. Asian kid in Cobra Kai, I mean, this guy is so annoying, like, he thinks that he's so, um, macho, and he's just not, like, he's just, like, really irritating, I just, I don't know, um, the, I'm just, guys, I really love this show, I love the drama, I love the, um, backstabs, I love the, um, twists and turns, the the comedy of it all, it's just, I'm telling you guys, like, it's, it's one of the best ideas, um, you know, I really don't like reboots, and I really don't like them at all, um, of old, um, movies and, and, and stuff like that, because I always feel like it's done poorly, um, and I always feel like it's a money grab, but this is the one thing that I will say, like, it's total nostalgia, um, the, the parallels are great, and, and it's just a fun watch, it really is, um, not sure I would recommend this as, as, like, um, a show that I would watch with really young kids, but I will say it's a nice family watch, um, it's a nice one to watch with the family, um, because all age ranges, um, will, will laugh with this one, uh, like I said, I, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would recommend this for really young kids, because there's some language in here that's questionable, um, but, but it's a good one, guys, um, I will also say, um, what were the ones that I watched September? I'm ta I'm looking at my movies now that I watch. I don't know which ones I watched in September, so I'm not gonna um comment on those, but I will comment on the show that I'm watching currently just so I can get this to a certain mark and then end it. Um currently I am watching I think it's also on its 5th season. I think the 5th season 
of um Handmaid's Tale, y'all, y'all, y'all. Um, for someone that is is like I said, totally conservative, um, and that's the type of stuff we get into on the other um channel. Um, but I, I will say I totally love this season. Um, it, it, what it really does for me is, is the political drama, um, the, uh, Aunt Lydia and, uh, Lawrence teaming up, uh, Commander Lawrence teaming up along with Nick Blaine. Uh, those are my three favorite characters of the show. I would say my favorite character is Aunt Lydia. Second favorite character, it really is a toss up between Blaine and, uh, Lawrence, I will say Lawrence is my second favorite character, and then Nick Blaine is my third. Um, the teaming up, the political drama, and having read the books, um, it's cool to see the final stage of it being brought about, and it's just, oh my goodness, I, I am hooked on this season, y'all, absolutely hooked, um, I'm telling you guys, the political drama just really gets me, guys. Like, it just really gets me. I have not seen many shows where it's... That element is there, and I totally love it. Um, Like I said, eventually I will do um, a book review on all the classic dystopians. Eventually I will get around to doing that. I will not be making any promises on that. Um... But eventually I'll get around to it. And I've in order to do that, I have to reread Handmaid's Tale. And this show is kind of me making me want to do that more. So hopefully that'll be one of the books I'll read before the end of the year. I'm crossing my fingers that I'm able to do that. Um, and I think I will based on the amount of time that I'll be given to do so. So um, that's it for now. Um... I just wanted to say I loved those two things, um, and I, I had a lot of fun um, watching those two shows so far. Um, oh, I will throw this in as well. I am currently um, watching the last season of The Walking Dead. I know a lot of people did not have the um, the uh, attention span to go that many seasons in a row. I will say that there was one season that just really I didn't pay much attention to at all. Um, but this season and this season finale that's about to come is just like, guys, it's just so good. Um, and I'm still waiting for Daryl and Carol. I know it's probably not going to happen um, with this season finale, but I'm hoping they get a spinoff praying to get a spinoff. I'll, I'll be so disappointed if they don't end up together, guys. Like, you guys have no idea. Um, I've been rooting for them since the day um, that Daryl stood up for Carol, and I I'm still waiting. I'm still on that train, guys, and I I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. Um, I also wanted to throw in there, because I don't talk about reality TV, because I don't watch it a lot, um, but I have, I have, I am feeling a little guilty, guys. I have been watching... Um, the, uh, Beverly Hills, of course, um, I've mainly been watching Beverly Hills for the drama, the Tom Girardi drama, uh, with Erica Jane, um, and let me tell you, I was, uh, thoroughly, um, impressed with this season because that's not the only drama that was going on this season, um, there was some drama going on between, uh, Kathy Hilton and Lisa, um, Rinna, which, if you follow my Instagram, you know, um, what my thoughts possibly are on the whole Lisa Rinna situation. Um, and, and I definitely thought it was interesting that they're going at it, guys. I mean, these, these elitists, um, are definitely going at each other's throats. Um, and it's so obvious to see it. So I'm enjoying, um, that season as well. Uh, the latest season of that as well. I've also been watching, um, which is my guilty pleasure, um, 90 day fiance <laughs> 90 day fiance happily ever after guys it's 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 a um it's one of those things where like TLC like th is something that you can only find in America okay and and it's really um hilarious to me 
Um, this season is a little more serious, um, because of what's going on, um, in Ukraine and how it actually pretty much impacts a lot of people on the show. Um, there, the drama between Andre and, and, um, uh, Charlie just continues, that saga continues, the saga of, um, Angela and Michael, which is really <laughs> who I mainly watch it for at this point, um, the, the drama with, uh, all these different characters on the show is just amazing, um, and then recently, before that, um, this year, I had also watched Family Chantel, which, let me tell you something, guys, whoo, that show, um, wow, is all I can say about the ending of their relationship, like, the fact that he literally, um, a spoiler alert, I'm gonna put a spoiler alert here, because I need to rant about this, um, the fact that Pedro literally ditched Chantel for this, uh, extremely, extremely, extremely young girl, um, probably hasn't even graduated a high, uh, co college, my bad, not high school, college, um, it is just disgusting, um, it's disgusting the way that, um, he would treat her, um, I, I just, these shows, guys, it, it just solidifies my position on marriage, um, solidifies that position, but it, these shows are just a train wreck, but I love to see it, love to see it, um, yeah, I mean, these shows are just amazing, guys. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't watch reality TV much, but, uh, with everything falling apart of the seams, guys, I need to find, um, some sort of outlet here, um, to, to, um, basically, uh, ease my mind with other people's pointless drama. So, that's what I need, that's what a lot of you need, quite frankly, a lot of you guys need <laughs> to sit in front of a TV, um, you know, for an hour at least, um, just like a lot of you guys seriously need to pick up a book, a lot of you guys seriously need to chill out, um, put your feet up and watch The Housewives of Beverly Hills, I'm just letting you know, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, September wasn't a great reading month, but, um, October is, and, um, I'm really excited for the movie wrap-up at the end of this year because, let me just say, um, it's going to be a tight race um, for the top 16 this year. So, yeah, and it may even have to be top 20, to be honest with you, because there's that many good ones that I watched. So, till next time. Bye, guys.